for Thursday, February 18th. If you would please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Um, by way of announcements, We have several upcoming town council meetings. Uh, Wednesday, March 10th, at the James Master Cole Upper Elementary School in the All Purpose Room is the deliberative session. Uh, Thursday, March 11th, is a regular meeting of the town council here in this room at 7 p.m. And Thursday, March 25th, is a regular meeting of the town council at 7 p.m. here in this room. We are uh, planning to be able to cancel the first the second meeting of February, um, because we're having this meeting now. So the meeting of the 25th, um, I think it's the 25th. Yes. Yeah, is, is gonna be canceled because the, the biggest thing on the agenda for that was number two on today's business. So if that's okay, we'll have a meeting if people want to. <laughs> You'll pass? Um, no. The, uh, <laughs> Before I get any further along, Eileen and Peter and Barbara are all excused for this evening um, and had let us know they weren't going to be able to make it, or let me know. Um, which brings us all the way down to our public hearing. Uh, we have a public hearing, a group petition to add a warrant article resolution to the 2021 town meeting warrant submitted by a group petitioner, signer Mary Beth Raven. Uh, the Town Council will hold a public hearing to receive public input on a group petition received pursuant to Charter Article 10-1, B. The petition is to add a warrant article resolution to the 2021 Town Meeting Warrant to see if the Town will vote to urge that the New Hampshire General Court, which is obligated to redraw the maps of political districts within the state following the federal census, will ensure fair and effective representation of New Hampshire voters without gerrymandering. Additionally, these voters asked the Town of Merrimack to urge the New Hampshire General Court to carry out the redistricting in a fair and transparent way through public meetings, not to favor a particular political party, to include communities of interest, and to minimize multi-seat districts. Paul, did you want to uh, introduce this at all or give us any background that we need to deal with um, the, before uh, we open it? The background is they, they did get the uh, number of Registered voters, I believe they were over, Jane said there were 79 registered voters who signed this petition. So they had sufficient over the 50 registered voters they needed for this group petition. Uh, it's before you tonight um, because of the timing that to get it on the warrant, we had to hear it tonight. So you got to the council to make a decision today and we have to post the warrant by Monday the 22nd. So that is why we're here tonight with the council to review it. Um, the council does have three options. Uh, the first option is, is uh, you have to make a decision tonight, one way or the other. The first option is do nothing. The second option is move it to the ballot. Or the third option is to make an ordinance through our ordinance policies. So those are the three options with a group petition that the council can move forward with. Okay. Are there any questions from the council before we get started? No. no. So, Mary Beth, hi. Well, and thank you all very much for taking your very valuable time. Excuse me, Mary Beth. There we go. Thank there you, you go. very much for taking your valuable time to have this hearing this evening. Um, as, as you've heard, over 79 people have signed this petition and I have a very short presentation, less than 10 minutes, and I think at any point if you'd like to interrupt and ask a question, feel free to do so. Okay. Um, so as you've already heard, we're asking for a non-binding resolution to be sent to our state officials and, and we're asking the town's voters to request fairness and transparency in the process when it comes to drawing any new legislative maps and require that the maps be drawn you know, with no favoritism to one political party or the other and make sure the mapping process happens in public meetings and is transparent. Um, and there was um, a 2006 
um, decision that towns of approximately 3,300 citizens or larger be given their own state rep. Of course, Merrimack has eight of their own, so this particular consideration is probably not that important to Merrimack because we have m way more than 3,300 people um, and, and we have eight of our own state reps at this point. Um, and um, myself and the others in this room who are bringing this to you are, are part of a volunteer-driven organization and other volunteers who are residents of other towns in New Hampshire are doing similar things in 103 other towns across New Hampshire. Um, I, I, I suspect you all know what gerrymandering is and the opposite of fair redistricting is gerrymandering and, and for example, this example is you know you have five districts and you can split them very different ways and some ways are fair and some ways are not fair. Um, and of course, as you probably all know, gerrymandering um, is designed to benefit the party in power and, and weaken the voice of others. Um, and as you all also probably know, uh, we had a census in 2020, so now it's time to redraw these or reconsider <coughs> the districts every 10 years based on the census. And it w may or may not create new districts, but new districts will be considered for the following, right? Our county commissioners, our state executive counselor districts, our state representatives, our state senators, and the biggest one, congressional districts. And I think we would all agree that districts should be contiguous, compact, and keep communities of interest together. That, that is, in general, what redistricting strives to be. And so why should Merrimack voters care? I don't think Merrimack in general has been um, too much affected in the past, but perhaps. But all voters want fairness and transparency. And as I'm sure you all know, undeclared voters are the largest voting bloc in New Hampshire, and they make up about 42% of the state's registered voters. I don't know about Merrimack Town itself, right? But I myself am undeclared. If you go through my registration history, you'll see sometimes I'm Republican, sometimes I'm Democrat. I tend to vote more for particular people rather than parties. So particularly as an undeclared voter, you know, I want to see that this is done, uh, done fairly. I don't care which party is in power. I want it done fairly based on, you know, the census results. Um, and there's a couple more reasons uh, why Merrimack voters should care. First, of course, is equity. Fair districts protect both parties or even three parties, you know, if their pow power should shift. Cost. Um, there were lawsuits after 2002 and 2012, and that cost taxpayer dollars. Um, and then there was also a disrupted election process. Disagreements between parties caused delays, and in 2002, it even caused candidate filing deadlines to be delayed. And last, representation. Um, when it comes to our state reps, it's unlikely that Merrimack could suffer the same fate as Hudson or Pelham, which in the past have been kind of broken up. So some part of the town was grouped with another part of another town, so they felt like the representation you know, was, was split and things like that. We've been fortunate. Merrimack has our own eight state reps, and, and you know, we, I personally think we'd probably rather not have them split and have some of them represent part of Hollis and part of Nashua and part of Manchester and things like that. Uh, this is going to be a quick review, I think, right? So we have the five executive council seats, and this is the way the five districts are now. And, and we are in District 5. And we have 24 senators, and here are the Senate districts. The Senate districts, as I'm sure you all probably know, kind of morph a little bit over the past 10 years. Um, but in general, you know, they have been relatively small morphing, and I don't think Merrimack has been particularly affected by that. And then we have the New Hampshire House districts, you know, 400 seats, 204 districts, Merrimack's its own district. And Back in 2011, um, according to several reputable news sources such as the Concord Monitor and New Hampshire Public Radio, um, there were districts that were gerrymandered and it was not a very public process. Um, and when the, the redistricting committee finally made it public, the public only had 24 hours to provide input on any of these New Hampshire House changes. Um, and then there were some proposed solutions, both of which were vetoed. So one of my main 
reasons for being here is, is let, let's try to make this process more transparent than it was in the past and give the public more time to understand what's going on and to provide input so that we feel, have confidence that this is a fair and equitable redistricting process. And so here's what we're asking for, right? That meetings be open to the public, that it's clear that you know, concerns of each town are being listened to, you know, have meetings in each county both prior and after to drawing up any maps so that we can have discussion, allowing for public comment and freedom of information. The key to inclusion here is simply transparency. So thank you very much for your time and your consideration. Okay, so we'll open the public hearing at 712. Um, if anybody else would like to um, comment on this uh, article, please come on up to the mic. That mic. Yeah. Yeah. No? Just let me close when the public hearing at 713. <laughs> That's no, what I was waiting for you. I was waiting for you to do that. <laughs> Come on, we need at least one question to make it worthwhile for us to come in here. Tonight. Well, uh, that, that was the public hearing. Yeah. Nobody from the public chose to speak up except for yourself. So, And we've received um, no uh, emails or anything. I haven't, no. Just to be put that on the record. No. So you had a comment? A couple of questions, three questions. Uh, well, actually, I'll bring it down to two. Um, there were lawsuits in 2002 and 2012. Is that accurate? Do we know what the results of those were? What were they about? Do you know? Um, no, I, I, the 2000, uh, yeah, no, I do not. Um, if I went through some of the links below, I tried to review some of the links as I was gathering data. Um, but other than it had to do with Jerry, the, the process was not clear and transparent and that some towns felt that their, particularly their state rep districts were gerrymandered, but I don't know any, any, any more details than that. And we don't know the effects, if they were effective or not? No, we do not. Okay. Uh, same thing with about the House bills. Was that 2019 and 2020? Right. I think they were introduced with the thought, understanding that the census is coming and let's try Assemble to address it. And in both of those terms, I got, did that get through the House and the Senate, but they were vetoed? That is my understanding. By the governor? Yes. Okay, and my third question is open to my co-conspirators here. <laughs> um, I'd like to know why, my understanding is, with 50, because of the charter, 50 votes or more, uh, a petition, and there's also another one which is 500 votes. Now at this point, we make a decision. They bring it forward, the council decides whether to put it a warrant or not, is that correct? But there's That's also an additional method by which a petition comes forward, but it gets put on the ballot, regardless of what we say. Correct. And is right. that a $500, I mean $500, 500 yeah. signature? That's correct. That's okay. what Paul was saying, yes. Okay, now what I wanna know is what, and again, it's just I want opinions. Why would we not do this? I think it's easy to determine to do it, <clears throat> but, but I also want to hear if there are reasons why we should not. Finley? Um, Just to be able to understand both sides. No, sure. Um, for, for me, we, we talked about it last year. We had a, a petition more article come to talk to us about uh, encouraging the federal government to uh, have carbon taxes, as I That's recall. Right. And, um, and they came late, and uh, they did have an opportunity, if enough of the town embraced the idea, they could have gotten 500 signatures put on the ballot. Um, uh, they came to us, and, and we did put it on the ballot. I, I wasn't in favor of that, uh, because I believe by doing that, it lends, for me, the credibility of the, of the article. And, and I didn't believe in the article. And so, um, and it's not that I disbelieve in yours, because I, I, I think we, all would want the transparency and all that, um, but, um, but I'm always concerned. I, this is an a, for me. It's been an apolitical body, and I like keeping it that way. Yeah. And I just have a little sense that politics might be part of the whole equation on this. And I, you know, it, it may not be. It may be. I don't. I don't know. But I fear that <clears throat> for me, I don't want to get into that mess 
um, if, if the townspeople embrace, you know, an idea, they normally would jump on. I, you know, people signing, you know, the petitions to get, you know, 500 signature threshold sounds daunting, and it is work. I've gathered signatures before, um, but but I believe it could be done, and so that's that's for me why I, I hesitate to support, you know, this type of bar article. Bill, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and. Like Finley, I voted, I voted against that article last year, but I supported it because the issue had merit to go before the voters of this community. And I think reading the ordinance, it's, it's our job to decide what petition has merit that's worthy for the voters' consideration. If somebody in the community, from the way I, from where I sit, if somebody came in here and wanted to change our dog tags from silver to red and wanted to do an initiative petition, to do that, to get the voters to change our dog tags from silver to red, then it would be up to decide, up to us to decide whether or not that would have a level of merit. And, and I'm trying to pick up something absurd that doesn't come across as absurd. Whereas in this particular instance, you know, the, 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 the state is going to be deciding this issue over the, over the next 6 to 12, 12 months. The issue does have merit for, for the voters' consideration. And based on the presentation that was made tonight, articulated the, the, the purpose behind the petition to validate the merit for what the, what the petitioners are asking to present to the voters. That's how I, that's how I look at it. I, I take my role of, I look at my role of, val and, I, and let me just stop, I appreciate Council Rothhouse's comments regarding us having, by approving the petition, does it validate the petition? It's, it's, it's a valid concern. But I think last year in our conversations, I think we were all pretty emphatic as a council, and I'd have to go back and look at the minutes, but I think we're all pretty emphatic that we're not taking a position on this. We're seeking, you know, we're voting to determine whether this belongs on the ballot or, or not. And, and I think, I think as, as, a, as a body, I think we're pretty, pretty clear about that. And I think, I do think most of the people here in the community, you know, do share that sense that if the council validate something to put on the ballot, they're, they're saying that it has merit, it's, it's worthy of having the dialogue, it's worthy of, of having people exercise their opinion whether they're in favor of it or not in favor of it, so. So you don't think, may I turn? Sure. <clears throat> okay, go ahead. So you don't think our agreeing to it implies agreement? No. I, I really don't. I, Which is what you're saying. And Philly and I disagree yes. on this. We okay. disagree on this. He I says understand. it implies agreement. I don't. But think I it understand does. your argument. Yeah, That's it's like I said, it's a valid point. Lon. Yeah. It, um, it begs a question, I guess. What happens if we, by council vote, say yes, it's worthy of being on the ballot? Yes, you should consider this, and the townspeople <coughs> voted no. Then that's their, that's their choice. That's their choice, absolutely. It's like any warrant, so it would not go forward. But it has no effect on the on the process of redistricting. I won't call it Correct. gerrymandering. It's it would not. No, be, no, no. The <laughs> we want it to be redistricting for sure. <laughs> the advisory would not be sent. That's why it's non binding. Because it's an advisory. No. I didn't. I didn't catch you, Nick. The what? I believe it's advisory. Yes. So, so if the town voted against the warrant, then the advisory would not be sent up to Congress. Thank you. Is that correct? Yeah. Paul, just one other thing for the council. Um, we do not put a recommendation. The council doesn't put a recommendation on this warrant article. So it isn't like you're recommending or not recommending it. Um, it, it just goes on as by petition, and that's what it says. It's, it actually says that in the language, the last sentence, by petition. So just wanted to clarify that as well. And it is advisory to not only the council, but to the state. Yeah. Right. Right, it goes up into the advisory. Yes. Tom, do you have an opinion? Should I put you on the spot? <laughs> Go ahead and put me on the spot. <laughs> no. Um, I guess it's just advice. I'm looking for... I'm list, I want to listen to all arguments. I, well, <laughs> or all thoughts. I don't have a good solid opinion. Um, 
my my thought is that this isn't going to be very valuable and it's going to take up time and energy but uh, but there are people 79 people that signed that uh, asking for it to go forward um, I have some difficulties with it that I wanted to try and understand though one of them is that it's requiring a letter from the town council as opposed to from the town or the town clerk or something like that I don't know if that's mm. critical to you guys but the council is not here voting on whether or not we want to send this the town is um, the other is the, the part of the petition that talks about um, minimizing multi-seat districts. I view Merrimack as a multi-seat district. And even though you suggested that Merrimack is fine with having eight, if you just leave a generic statement in there that minimize multi-seat districts, are you really asking for Merrimack to be split up into eight districts? Which I would not no, support no, in any way, right. shape, or form. I, and I would agree with you completely. Um, um. So I'm trying to understand, is this a, a form that you guys received from somewhere else in the state and you're just right. passing and, it and, around and town? Right, and, we, and we, we looked at it and and customized it a little bit and, and reviewed it with Paul, but right now that I hear your arguments, it, it could have been customized better, reworded better by, for example, multi-seat. The intent is seats that cross towns or combine towns on, you know, in the ways where they could not. Excuse they're me? They're called floaterial districts. Floaterial? Yes. Floaterial districts. Bedford has a floaterial district where one seat is shared with Amherst. Oh. That's what they, they would used to. to. And we used to Remember share a, a seat time with Litchfield or something Correct. like that. Yeah. 20 years ago. Or Which had like nothing. It so, suggested <laughs> had nothing to do with Merrimack. So, <laughs> Merrimack so, had nothing so, to do with Litchfield. It was, so, Mr. Chairman, your point about multi-seat is well taken. It should it should read floaterial because if that's the intent, it's the minimum. Yes, that is the district. intent. Well, it's a different connotation than multi-seat. Yeah, it is. It's a very different, very different connotation. And I don't like the idea of the letter coming from us. You did like that I idea? Don't. Oh, I don't. Right. I oh, mean, I, I think they're an advisor going up, but it should not be addressed from us because that implies concurrence. Which is why I think me. it should come from the town clerk or something well, like that. Yes, manager. yes, I agree. Because otherwise I'd just be asking you for a resolution here tonight That's as right. opposed to be That's being on the ballot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Paul, can we make any adjustments to this or do we do that at the deliberative session when it's moved or? If we, we, the proper form is the deliberative session to make those changes because this is a petition. Petition, petition has to go forward to deliberative as written by the council, as written by the petitioner. And then at the deliberative session, we, you can make those changes at that point. I don't okay. know that you can. No, I, and maybe you can. You would probably know better than me. Why am I even second guessing you? I've always thought petition articles like this couldn't be changed have to be presented. No. because they've been signed by. Well, if it comes from people us, they're not necessarily a different game, But people yeah. who signed it signed a certain uh, petition, and that's why you, you're probably right, Paul. Because yeah. I don't know for I sure. That's the only spot a petition warrant. I've always been told that's the only place a petition warrant article can be changed is at the yeah. deliberative session, okay. and there's language now that the laws have put in there about changing purpose and changing this. Moving to town clerk instead of town council is not a big change. It's content change. The, con the, the, the minimizing, yeah. yeah. I, I believe what I heard from other town managers when this came out and got floated because we did have a little conversation is that that point exactly is is the combination of, of two, Bedford, Amherst. Crossing, minimize, crossing community cr lines. Cr yeah. not, not redistricting communities, but redistricting how the state looks at representation for those communities. And cro like with us with Litchfield, if they drew that again, to minimize those as much as possible. And I think that's what the language of the multi-seats. Definitely in my conversations with, with other towns and other people, the, the Floteral District was the intent yeah. of minimizing I'm sure. those. I'm sure it was. So with those two changes, you're not changing the art, the, the not petition. Not the intent direct, of the article. The, the intent yeah. of the petition. Correct. You're just cleaning it up, and that's why you can change those at deliberative there's, session. There's semantical changes, not substantive. Right. You, you can't put, uh, um, you know, by petition of 25 more eligible voters, the town of Merrick does not see if the, t does not want to vote 
You see what I'm saying? And that first says, will not. Oh, yeah. Will not vote. You can't change yeah, it that way. You can't change it to that way. Right. Because that changes the intent. Right. But by changing those two words, it deliberative, it can be moved forward. Okay. Um, I, I, I guess. <laughs> I'm having a problem. Are you? <laughs> well, because if we vote on this, it's on faith that those two things will be changed at deliberative. Because I do have issues with both of those. Because things. if it goes to the deliberative, it's going to the ballot in some form or another. Right. Right. And if it goes as this, and whatever the word is you use. Fulterial. 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 <laughs> How do you spell that? F-L-O-T-E-R-I-A-L. Meaning the Fulterial. floating district. Or correct. Like that. That's correct. Yeah. To F -L -O minimize Fulterial districts versus multi C. Right? Correct. Mm -hmm. That is opposed. Okay, so if with this were to go through with us personally, I'd have to have assurance that those two things would be changed. Uh, and how do I feel comfortable with that? And, and here's what I would do, uh, no. Councilor Harrington. I, I would, I would make, I propose that I would be more than happy to propose the change at at the deliberative session. As a councilor, As we a, can do that. Yes, we, yes, we can. We yeah. can okay. certainly propose that change. It would be better if it was presented that way from the floor. Correct. Oh, I have no problem being there and suggesting the amendment. Not at all. But I was. You or one of the petitioners would propose the, the right. warrant. Right, somebody has to be there anyway. Somebody has to be and there I, to propose I mean, the warrant. It, it, it's it's okay warrant. if I propose it with amendments from the get-go like that? Yes, I'm fine I think with that. you can. And rather than... <coughs> uh, we'll get you in touch with Lynn Christensen. Okay. She's the moderator. Yeah, she oh, yeah. she yeah. understands she's that. Lynn has already have, schooled me on many right. things. <laughs> you might have to move the article <laughs> as written and then get a second and then give her the written changes, the written changes that you want yeah. to make with the town clerk and the children. Prepared to go. But, being, to. but being the, um, the petitioner, you might be able to just, just present a modified version and, and instead of moving what's printed, Move, move the modified what you version, read. yeah, or whatever. Uh, see, she'll tell you whether you can do that or not with petitions. But that's been done in the past, where more articles can be moved with slightly different wording uh, up front. So, are there any other comments by the council? Just in summary, I, I've always I understand your concern. I think it's a valid one, and I think there has to be an evaluation of any political nuances that are inherent. This is borderline to me, but it's borderline. It's not clear one way or the other. But in general speaking, I've always felt comfortable whatever the citizens want to present to other citizens, I'm okay with. I mean, wh why are we, again, making it clear that we're not implying, <coughs> whoops, that we're not implying concurrence with it. But I would, I would feel okay. I'm not. Should I make a motion to that? I, it would, it would we have to we be, need a motion to move forward here. Okay, but um, right now it's as presented. Correct. So I will make a motion to allow. Before you make a motion. Yep. <coughs> would it be, if it came? Well, then it would come from us. I was going to say, if, could we change it as, as if we were passing it on, on our own? But. But that would be from us. Then. Yeah, then it would be from us. It would us. be from us. That's correct. So, okay. But I think the assurance, I mean, I'm going to trust you. Right, well, right. Unless, <laughs> But there's I don't no know, reason um, not to. Right. But unless I get in a car crash, I plan to be there and, and some introduce reason. it. For some reason. Yeah, right. Don't even think that. that. But for some reason, oh. Bill is a backup. I would I'll move that we uh, move this to the ballot. I'll second that. Okay. There's a motion to move this petitioned article to the ballot as presented. Uh, yeah, with, 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 with the hope and <laughs> with, <laughs> with slight with trepidation. The faith, I'm sure. <laughs> with the faith. And, um, and I echo Councilor Harrington's opinion regarding citizens communicating with other citizens. I do agree with that. So. I did this 30 years ago, redistricting. Oh, did you? I sat on the committee that did Did you have fun? It, so. <laughs> it was interesting for sure. It, it was. Was that when you were a libertarian or? No, it was my first term. First term? Yeah. Libertarian yeah. or no? No, no. You hadn't no. switched yet. Yep. 
and uh, it, okay, was, so uh, it was Milford who was making the give most. Me just a second. <laughs> we, we have, so we have a motion to move this to the Sorry. table by Nancy and seconded by Bill. Any other discussion? And now I'll let you finish. And no, there's no d further discussion. It was I mean, I, so I have my I have my limitations on on the the blanket statement that if it comes from voters, it should be presented to voters, um, because there have been times when I felt things weren't appropriate or weren't explained appropriately. And so I always wonder, where is the party coming from? What is their background? You know, are they afraid of the Republican Party that's currently in a majority and the Republican governor? Are they afraid of the Democratic Party? Are they afraid of something specific, what, what's driving it? Which I think is a little bit of what's making you feel like this is a partisan effort and stuff like that. And, and um, always wondering <coughs> quite what's going on. I thought last time, since we're talking about it, the, uh, the um, carbon tax thing was not clearly understood by people. So you put something out there that looks very germane. It can be made to look totally innocuous and yet have stuff about it that people just don't understand. And that's what, so that's why I won't blanket except something like this. But I, I will vote to, to move this to the ballot with the exceptions of what I'm concerned about. Um, but, but just because people come forward and, and a group of 79 is relatively small we used to be able to modify the whole town budget based on that when we had town meetings and didn't didn't go to votes. Um, so I mean, not that not that their opinions are unimportant, but but they're not necessarily representative of a majority. And if they can word it such that it looks totally innocuous and yet has something buried in it, um, that always concerns me. Uh, but anyway, so if there's no other discussion, Lon. Um, I. I don't want to vote confused, but I'm confused. Okay. The petitioner's petition will be presented, if we vote in favor, at the deliberative session, and we are relying on the petitioners to suggest an amended change. Of those two things. Yeah. Of those two or, things. Or anybody at the deliberative session, yep. I guess, to try and suggest those minor tweaks that don't change the intent of the well, petition. Well, I don't think they're minor, but. You don't think they're minor? Well, that's my confusion. And if, and I have Bill as a backup. <laughs> that if for some reason they change their mind, Bill's gonna do it. Well, he's gonna suggest it. That doesn't mean the deliberative session's gonna go true. along with that's it. That's true. <laughs> that's true. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it will change. Yeah. March 10, the voters will be asked to. Move it to by, the warrant. By warrant, if, if we. If, if we move it to the warrant, move it to the warrant. they'll be, be asked, asked to, accept it. to consider the petition that was presented to us. Yes. And then there will be perhaps amendments suggested. Correct. Correct. I don't know if it can be delivered originally as written or whether it can be modified and delivered that way. But in any case, that would have a, an amendment implied in it. Um, I don't believe we tonight can change the No, petition. we can't change this. No, we can't. So whatever we decide, this is the petition that will originally be presented to presented. Yeah. the deliberative session attendees, at which point they'll do whatever they want with it, correct? Yes, sir. Am I clear on that point? Thank you. You don't have faith like I do. No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll call for a faith vote on the that motion. The alterations will be made prior to it being put on the ballot at the deliberative session. I am having faith that those alterations that we feel uncomfortable about will amend that, and therefore the amended warrant would be put on the ballot to be voted on. Correct. I think okay. You're right. right? I think you're right. Yeah. All those in favor of the motion to move this to the warrant signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Or abstaining? With both present. Is that an abstain? Is that an abstain? It's, it's present. He can vote present. 
Okay, so that passes three, one, zero with Lon Woods present. Correct. So it'll go to the warrant. And we hope everything works out. Thank you very much for your time. And talk, with, you. and talk with. Oh yeah, and I'll get it. Work it out with Lynn Shell Christensen know. with what the so exactly are. how mm -hmm. you can present it. Mm -hmm. And there's the the two things that I mentioned was coming from the town clerk's office. Yep, I took notes. And mm -hmm. the uh, floaterial. 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 Thank you. Enhanced Thank you very much for your time. Tonight. You're welcome. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mary Beth. Okay, which brings us to our second item on the agenda, which is um, the 2021 deliberative session discussion. Uh, the town council to discuss the details and motions of the upcoming deliberative session being held on Wednesday, March 10th, 2021. Mr. Chair, um, you just give me one second, and I'm mm -hmm. I'm reading this other piece of paper that I hadn't seen before. So this note says there were two petitions received. No, that was. Yeah. Or is that last year, Mr. Chairman? That was a that was legal last year. I'm sorry. Last year. So. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. Okay. Paul. Um, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we'll have to go over who's moving what motion. But if I could get a motion from the council to move the warrant to the deliberative session, just to make it all legal, that the council has moved now all six items that we discussed to the deliberative session, because we did five back last Thursday, we did this one, the sixth one. So if we can just have a motion to move the warrant as written to deliberative session on March 10th, I, I agree. So moved. Seconded. Thank you. Uh, motion by Lon Wood, seconded by Bill Boyd to move the Second. warrant to the deliberative session, including all six articles. Is that sufficient, Paul? Yes, it is. Thank any, you. Any discussion? We'll call for a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed or abstaining? That passes 5 0 0. Thank you. And is it going to have what we're sending will actually have the vote of the recommendation by the town council yes. for the two through four, two through five? Okay, they're not on the pages that we're looking at here, so. Um, I could give you a, a new copy if everybody wants one. No, that's no, fine. You can just tell us. It was I mean, we all voted to it support was all of zero, zero. It, was, right. it was unanimous. Was everybody here, so it's 7-0? Yeah, okay. It seven, zero. Yeah. So Article 2 is the um, operating budget? That is correct. And um, normally the chairman introduces that article? Yes. Does somebody want to second it? I'll do that. And Bill? Please. Okay. Article three is the capital reserve fund from the general fund. Or I think uh, Peter and Barbara are gonna do that. <laughs> Peter will will make the motion and Barbara will second that. That's I I think I heard that. And in I, their absence I would, but <laughs> <laughs> would you like to? I mean I don't mind. Yeah, I'll do whatever you'd like. That's all there is. <laughs> So what, so <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know. Mr. Chairman, I rarely get these opportunities <laughs> to volunteer people. I just paybacks. I, you know, we're about paybacks. Oh, I know. I, that's not so a problem. So Finley, are you going to do it, or is Peter doing it? Uh, it doesn't matter. I'll do it. I don't Finley, know. Finley, and uh, we'll do Barbara's second. How's that? Okay. I had already written your name. <laughs> Article four is the capital reserve funds from the wastewater treatment plant. Anybody, anybody want to move that one? Barbara? Barbara. <laughs> Seconded by Pete. Okay, article five, I'll do. And I'll, and I'll second that. I've already got the rationale right here. 
Did, did you want to introduce any of these? Or? No. You're okay? I'm good. No, I'm good, Mr. Chairman. Thank and you. And then article says will be by the petitioner. Vaughn, did you want to do any of them? I'm fine. <laughs> We only have the. I don't the, want you to feel left out over there. <laughs> we only have the four total. <laughs> hey, I know you won't do the one I volunteer for. I really don't mind that. It's just a matter of me. Me neither. We could let Lon. You want a second article three? Sure. Okay, we'll take Barbara off of there and second. We'll be Lon. Oh, there you go. Okay, for article three. So article three, Finley first and Lon second. Yeah. Then we'll have Barbara and Pete do this Article 4. Yeah. Which is pretty straightforward. Comments from the press and the public? Nope. Comments from the council? Bill? Just very quickly, um, as I know my, my colleagues are aware, but just to let the general public know that uh, SP 117, which involves the removal of Exit 10, was presented to the Senate Transportation Committee. Um, and then very quickly, the Department of Transportation, in their infinite wisdom, wanted to slap on adding uh, the, the town of Merrimack taking that stretch of uh, Continental Boulevard from Industrial Drive down to, down to 101 uh, as, as a possible amendment to Senate Bill 117. Um, I was listening to the conversation, and I was able to uh, chime in and voice our, our opposition to that proposed proposed amendment, for the lack of a better word. So, but I just wanted to let the people be made aware, people that, that that pay attention to the to our conversations that we've had regarding that stretch of road. That for whatever reason, the Department of Transportation is really, really bent on. Trying They've to been trying to get the town to take that. Absolutely. Years. That road with a half million dollars worth of maintenance half requirements. Half million dollars, or something. that's correct. So um, just wanted to make sure that the people in town have it on their radar. So was the amendment put on there? The amendment has not been put on there yet, but it was it was suggested by one of the senators to Assistant Commissioner Washchuk that that, that be considered uh, being put on to SB uh, 117 uh, for consideration. Is Washchuk, uh, who? He's, He's the assistant, assistant commissioner of the Department of Transportation. Department of Transportation. Okay. And what was the other thing you said that they could just give it to us, or they could just reclassify it as part? Re reclassify as a class, it as a class five, five row and just give it to us. And which, it would just be ours, or something. Yeah, be ours. And for the record, I just am hoping that Councilor Boyd will take uh, uh, my comments back to the Department of Transportation that I'm willing to close Continental Boulevard for a period of time. So they can deal with the traffic on 101A. I, I would be more than happy to convey that message, Council. Ooh. Thank you. Oh, it's Council Rothos. Yeah, it's I like it. Anyway, I just wanted to met just wanted to mention it. So that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay. That's intriguing. Any other comments from the council? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Seeing none. We um we're going to cancel next week's meeting. That's too bad. Um, because we just covered what we needed for that meeting. <laughs> And postpone anything else to the following meeting, the eleventh of sure March. Oh, so we'll end up with two meetings in March, day after one after the other. But that's the way the, the schedule goes. Yeah. Um, COVID nineteen is still a, an ongoing concern in in the state and across the country. So please continue to be careful. Um, even though there's a vaccine out and some people have gotten it, doesn't mean we can start ignoring uh, the susceptibility and the transmittability of the disease. Um, so please continue to carry on until we're, we hear further guidance. Um, there's nothing else. Um, motion to adjourn. Motion Second. to adjourn by Bill, seconded by Nancy. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed or abstaining? We are adjourned. Thank you very much.